Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield LEGO video. Today, we're going to be taking an introduction at another very venerable and useful LEGO piece that you'll find in your Technic collections. So let's get started, shall we? Now, officially, LEGO calls this class of pieces the Axle Holders. H however, I don't really like that name because I think it's rather vague, and so for the purpose of this video, we're going to be calling these pieces either binoculars, referring to the two-hold versions, or cyclopses, referring to these, which look like a little monster's head. Think my names are silly? Well, think about it. Erling Brick? I mean, yeah, I know the guy's name was Erling and all, but I mean, that's kind of silly too. So. Let's go with binoculars and cyclopses, shall we? Regardless of names, these pieces provide one specific purpose in your Technic collection. They kind of are like sideways building pieces in your normal LEGO collection. They can attach a beam going in one direction, for example like this or this, to one side, and they can attach an axle through the holes on the other. And this can provide some interesting uh, angles and shapes in your model. We'll start out with the Cyclops pieces. Now, the first one we'll take a look at is the very small one-eyed Cyclops like this. You can see here it has a stud, it has a hole on one side and a cross hole on the other side. So just as we saw demonstrated, you can clip a pin into one side and a cross hole, like an axle, onto the other side. And I'm sure that you can come up with myriad uses for this. Next one we're taking a look at is the slightly larger version of our original piece. As you can see here, it has two set holes and one cross hole. Now this, in my opinion, makes a lot stabler frame. So for example, you can attach two pins here, then you can attach any sort of beam here, and it won't be able to rock back and forth any. It's very solid. So if you want to attach a beam to an axle, position like this, and make sure it's solid, this can work very effectively. Next, we have this Cyclops piece. Now this one, in my opinion, looks like a Cyclops with ears. So as you can see, it has the hole at the top here, a cross hole at the side. So as usual, you can put a pin right here, and stick a cross hole through here, all right? Now, the fun thing about these little uh, ears on the side by the pin uh, is that if you attach this member to a beam, the ears will hold it in place. So in other words, even though this is technically free to rotate, as soon as you push this down next to the beam, it won't be able to rotate. The ears hold it in place. If you wanted to build a frame, for example, that when two beams were aligned perfectly, the member in the center would stay in place, but when the two beams were separated, the member in the center would slip, this piece might be very useful. Usually, in general, this piece with its little ears on the side can help partially clip it or hold it to something as long as the axle, as long as the sideways rotation doesn't receive much torque. Finally, we have the V-angle Cyclops piece, which really isn't a Cyclops piece, but I think this is the best way to classify it. As you can see here, this piece has three holes. It has one to each side, and then one smack dab in the middle. Now, this piece can be used in many different contexts, but one of my favorite uses for it is to clip a pin on each of the 45 degree angles and then attach a beam of some sort to each side. Here, you've got a whole lot of motion. I find this especially useful when building like an alternate shoulder or hip joint for Mecca. For example, here's the hip, so it can rock back and forth, also here, so it can motion side to side. This piece is incredibly useful if you want to make some non-technic models with just like a couple special moving elements. It really adds a lot of details. Man, 
I got way too excited about a very simple piece, but trust me, this piece is revolutionary. Okay, okay, I'll move on. Now let's take a look at the binocular pieces. Now, these pieces are very similar in my mind to souped up versions of the Cyclops pieces. Once again, they change from beam holes to an axle cross hole. Now, the first piece that we'll look at looks a lot like, almost like a human face, you know, with two eyes and a little slit for an irritated mouth. Now, this piece is very, very, very similar to our original Cyclops piece. It just adds two stud holes instead of one. And that can be kind of useful, once again, if you want to brace a member and make sure that, like a beam, and make sure that it doesn't move or rotate at all, like this. The second binocular piece is also quite similar to the, to the original Cyclops member. However, this one has a particular use, and I can see this has the two prongs here. So, this is a particularly useful if you want to pin um, a member with a cross hole in it. So, for example, like this lift arm here. So this is nice if you want to uh, change the angle of some sort of beam, for example. Just like this, you could attach something, set it off at some strange angle that you couldn't normally have in a model. And now, our final binocular member. As you can see here, it has two holes up top here and two holes on the side. Now, this is especially useful if you want to pin one beam at an angle like this and another like this. As you can see, this is great when you want to build like a frame or something. Kind of similar to those super pins we looked at in the last episode. Now, that was all fine and all. I want to leave you with a little more than just my general, you can stick a beam on here and stick an axle through here. I want to tell you a little bit more about at least two uses that I find particularly useful for these cyclopean and binocular devices. When you are building a large Lego model that perhaps is going to have some heavy technic framing, or if you're going to be building a Technic model yourself, you may find yourself in need of a joint. Something that will move, a member that will move, but that will hold in place, that can hold a heavier piece. My solution to this problem revolves around these nice Cyclopean members that we looked at, at earlier in the video. What you'll do is clip the three members to a 1x3 friction pin, like this, and then attach three pins with a cross hole. One, two into the cross holes on one side of our subassembly, and one to the cross hole on the other side. Now, we'll make two of these, and attach them to a beam, like this, with the two pins on the side that will be carrying the the main part of the model. Now, what you'll do is attach another beam, This'll, this beam will represent the other piece of the model, to these two pins here, and voila, you have a member which can bend like this. However, it is very strong. It takes a lot of pull to open this up. So if you wanted to hold something heavy, like, say, a shuttle's wing here, this could be very useful if you wanted to pose it at a certain angle. One of my other favorite uses for the binocular members is when trying to find just one more way to set Technic beams off at a 90 degree angle. I know we've already looked at a whole bunch of ways to do this using beams, using lift arms, using some really cool super pins, but right here, this method is really effective. If you want to pop something in a small space, it's also incredibly strong. You'll need one face-like binocular piece. This 
binocular piece with the two prongs and some sort of axle. But I'm going to use the 1x2 axle pin for right now. What you'll do is take the pronged piece and fit it into the binocular face piece like this. And then slip your axle in between through here. Now here you have a very solid member which using a couple pins can set different beams off at two different angles, as you can see, like this. If you want a solid way to hold a beam off at a 90 degree angle, this little subassembly is priceless. For today, we took an introduction to cyclopean and binocular style pieces technic pieces that allow you to change the angle of a beam and an axle or a beam and another beam and really allow you to add a whole bunch more detail to your models. We also looked at a couple different ways that you can use these pieces. Ways that I particularly think are rather useful. But you can judge that for yourself. As always, these ideas are just that. Ideas. If any of these ideas were helpful for you, I'm very happy. But if not, that's just fine too. We all build in our own way. If you do in fact like this video or like this series, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you don't like this video, then still please comment and rate, and if you still want, please subscribe. But more importantly, I just want to hear what you think would make this channel different and better. One last thing. This month, June has a fifth Sunday, which means that I'll be doing a special LEGO video where I can answer some questions or suggestions from my viewers. In other words, you. If you have something you want to ask about the channel or something you particularly want a video on, please comment it, and I'll try to see if I can make it happen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.